the first book that I read this is not the first book what am I saying <laughs> I know it's been a while since I've done a wrap-up and it's been definitely too long for a January wrap-up but I don't care I'm gonna do it anyways because I just want to talk about the books that I read that's the whole point I created a booktube channel in the month of January I read three books I was kind of in a reading slump was it my best month eh. in February though I read seven books which wow is kind of a record for me I'm pretty sure because I don't ever read seven books in a month definitely came out of that reading slump and hit the ground running. So let's talk about the books I read. The first book I read in the month of January was Sadie by Courtney Summers and I did not give this book a rating. Let me tell you why. I listened to this in audiobook format. I thought the audiobook was fantastic. I like the way they did, you know, the narration in the podcast. It seemed like a real true podcast. It was just great. Love that part. The actual plot I thought was tragic, I thought it was a tantalizing story, but I expected more. And I think it's because there was so much hype around this book, everyone was just raving about it. Again, I did think it was tragic, but I just expected more. It, it just kind of fell flat for me. But I think that may have been because I was in a reading slump. And so that's the reason I didn't want to rate it. I'm afraid that my feelings towards this book are just because they were hazy from the reading slump. I did go out and actually buy the physical copy. I do plan on reading it in the near future. The last two books I read in the month of January were Unforgettable and Lucky by Cecily Von Ziegeser and these are books four and five in the It Girl series which is the spin-off of the Gossip Girl books but this follows Jenny Humphrey as she goes to another elite boarding school. I gave Unforgettable a 3 stars and I gave Lucky a 4.5 stars. I don't want to say too much about these books just because they are part of a series and I don't want to spoil it for anyone. They are both super drama filled of course. They're just fun books and entertaining to read when you don't want to think too hard about things. Lucky may be my second favorite book in the series. The second half of this was bomb. It was just amazing. Tinsley absolutely slayed. I was in awe like a bow down to Queen T. The first book I read in the month of February was Cruel Beauty by Rosamond Hodge and this was a reread. This book is a Beauty and the Beast retelling with some Greek mythology elements in it. I felt like it was more of a Persephone and Hades retelling which I feel like technically that is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I don't know. Anyways there were Greek elements in it. I thought that worked in great. The magic system I think was based on alchemy or had alchemy elements in it. The magic system I was a bit iffy on. I didn't completely understand the magic system if I'm honest. So this book follows our main character Nyx who has been engaged to the demon bargain lord since birth when her father made a bargain that you know of course as bargains go with demons did not turn out for the best. She knows that she's going to marry him and so she's been training her entire life to kill him in order to save her village. She is going to sacrifice herself to save her village and her family. Nyx has a twin sister and because of this bargain and the fact that she's the one who was chosen to be married off to the demon lord. She's the one who was chosen to be sacrificed. Nyx has a lot of darkness in her heart that she wishes she didn't have because it causes her to just have all of this pent-up anger towards her sister because her sister doesn't have to worry about the things that Nyx has to. Of course, since it is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, things don't exactly go to plan when Nyx does end up at the demon lord's castle. The romance I did think moved kind of quickly. There is a little bit of a lot, uh, a little bit of a love triangle, but not a love triangle how we would expect it. You just have to read it. It's just, it's not, it's a love triangle, but it's not a love triangle. I 
definitely enjoyed more of the romance between Nyx and the Demon Lord Ignifix. I was swooning a lot more with Ignifix than I was with Shade. The ending is where it lost me. I probably would have would have given it a solid four stars if it weren't for the ending and I do recall the ending being what tripped me up the first time I read it. There's I, I can't say too much uh, duh because I would give away the ending but there's just this shift in events that I have no idea. I have some idea but it just isn't entirely clear but I still really enjoyed it. I thought it was a good book just might not reread it again. The second book I read in the month of February was The Disasters by M.K. England and this was a wild card. So I gave this book a five stars. But let me tell you why that was surprising. When I got this book in the book subscription box I was very disappointed. I was like, ugh, it's a sci-fi, like, boring. I don't like sci-fi. Only sci-fi book I've really ever read was Illumini. And I thought this is just I'm never gonna read this. I ended up picking this book up because I needed something to read at the office when I had downtime, but I didn't want it to be something that I would be super engrossed in, that I wouldn't focus on my work. I took this to work, read it, and absolutely freaking loved it. It is a sci-fi, but I want to say it's like a light sci-fi. It didn't have too many sci-fi elements. I don't know if that makes sense, but just for me, from my perspective, it was more of like an action adventure. I don't know how to describe it. It just wasn't entirely sci-fi. So if you expect a full-on sci-fi book, I think this, you might not quite get what you're looking for in this book. It is set in the future where we have colonized other planets out in outer space, and so now we have Earth people who train on the moon in order to go live and work on the space colonies. Nax, our main character, and his other group of misfits end up flunking out of the academy. They're sitting in the waiting room waiting on their shuttle to be sent back to Earth. And there goes their chance of ever leaving Earth. There's an explosion at the academy. So following this explosion, there is a grand cover-up, and our misfits are the only people who know what actually happened at the Academy. So it ends up that this, these group of failures <laughs> end up having to save everyone else. Definitely what won me over was the cast, was these group of failures. They were so diverse. We have different sexual orientations, different religions, ethnicities. We have a character with mental illness suffering from panic attacks and anxiety. Nax, our main character, is bisexual, so there is a love triangle with him and another girl and guy. It's not super pre uh, prevalent. Is that the word? It's not super pre pre prevalent. It's not a main plot point it's more of a side story so you don't you don't have too much romance which I for one did not mind at all I thought it worked just fine without the romance it just wasn't made a plot point like it wasn't like Nax wasn't just the bisexual character no he was the leader of this group of misfit, misfits and just happened to be bisexual you know I don't, I don't know if I'm explaining that right but it just wasn't a plot point it just it's just who they were as people and I love that because I feel like sometimes they just kind of make it that person's entire identity to be whatever their tiny difference is and in this book it's just like okay this character is transsexual and that's just who she is love this book five stars definitely will reread probably many many times because I absolutely loved it I also read The Cruel Prince finally by Holly Black Holly stop moving the camera I gave this book a five stars which duh I mean everyone loves this book I thought the first third probably was pretty pretty yeah, it wasn't blowing my mind but it definitely picked up once Jude became a spy I could not put it down I skipped through like dinner to finish this I had a headache I read it through the headache and through dinner just to get it done because I just could not put it down Taryn and Locke suck end of story that's all I'm saying about that they just suck and deserve to be ran over the twists and turns definitely caught me off guard the ending blew my mind I 
I don't, again, I don't know how smart I am, but I did not see that ending twist coming. So I thought that was fabulous. I audibly gasped when I read it. I loved the fact that Jude was in control, you know? Like, she didn't need a man, male, whatever, you know, guiding her. She was just doing things as fit her needs and what she needed to get done, and she got it done. Jude is is great. Hardin is actually an ass and cruel, which the cruel prince, duh. But I just feel like sometimes you have those moody, dark love interests, but it actually turns out that they cared the entire time or, you know, they were fighting against their feelings. But I feel like Hardin is a genuine, genuine ass. I don't think he even acknowledges the fact that he has feelings for her. He's just, I don't know, that, that was just kind of interesting to me <laughs> that he was an actual true jerk. So really enjoyed it. Have the second book, haven't read it yet, but I'm sure I will enjoy it just as much. And the fact that this is not a super huge book and she actually fit a lot of, like this small book packed a punch. Let's just put it that way. A Face Like Glass, I gave a 3.75 stars. This is actually a middle grade fantasy, and it was a book gifted by my best friend Jenny. I love this cover. I saw it, I saw this book so many times on her shelf, and I was just like, that cover, I need to read it. I don't even know what's it about, what's it about, but I want to read it, and I want to read it now. And it was confusing as heck. It's a middle grade fantasy, and I was so lost the entire time. <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed it, don't get me wrong, but it was, I don't even know how to explain it to you. And I don't think you should know a lot going into this book. Like, I was confused almost the entire time, but at the end, they tie it together. I felt like, it felt very Alice in Wonderlandy because the main character, Neverfell, ends up following a white rabbit out to start her adventure. So it's a whimsical, fantastic story with Alice in Wonderland-like world vibes. It takes place in Caverna, which is a town or world that is actually underground in a series of caves. They've actually built out Caverna in the caves. In Caverna, we have these master craftsmen. We have people who can invent wines who make you forget like the past two hours of your life or we have cheeses that make you remember things. It's just very fantastical. Um, and the point with Caverna is that all of these people don't have facial expressions. So they all have to be taught facial expressions and they can't ever just naturally react to things. So we have Neverfell who lives with a cheese grandmaster and he's kept her hidden because Neverfell has the interesting quality that her face reacts to everything. Face like glass. Uh, you know, you can see everything on her face and she, it, that's just unheard of in Caverna because no one can do that. You have to be taught these facial expressions and then you have to consciously think about what face you're putting and they have numbers and descriptions to all of these faces. That's all I can really say without giving away too much. Like I said, you're going to be frustrated when you read this book, at least I was, but in the end it all makes sense and you're just mind blown and I actually really loved it and thought it was really, really well thought out. I also read Nemesis by Brendan Reichs. I don't have the book with me because I left it at my boyfriend's house. I gave it a 3.5 stars because it started out really, really strong and then it kind of fell flat at the end. So our main character, Min, is killed every two years on her birthday and wakes up the next day in a clearing perfectly fine. She gets shot every two years and dies, but she wakes up the next morning without a single bullet wound. How? Why? What? <laughs> is going on and that really captured me and you get that right from the first page like we get we start the book with Min hiding trying to prevent her death and it not working so it grabbed me right from the first page it is kind of sci-fi -y, I think kind of dystopian I guess in, towards the end like I said it had a really strong beginning but then it just fell flat like the reasoning behind all of these things I was just like okay what is going on 
like there was so much build up. The ending kind of set it up for like a Hunger Games like plot for the second book. It is a trilogy. I think the last book is coming out later this year or may have already come out. I'm not sure. I also was just ticked off because Min could have found out so much information if she just would have talked to her mom. If she just would have asked and she acknowledges that like I should you know I should ask my mom but then she's stubborn and doesn't want to ask her and that annoys me because it's like this book could have you could have just gotten a whole bunch of stuff out of the way if you just would have asked your mom and I don't know if I'm going to continue with the second book or the rest of the series just because I've never read the Hunger Games I have no interest in reading the Hunger Games and I don't want to read a book that kind of sets up for a Hunger Games like setting. The last two books I read in February were The Thirteenth Pearl and The Strange Message in the Parchment by Carolyn Keene. They are part of the Nancy Drew mystery stories. I used to love Nancy Drew as a child but I've come to realize that it is actually the Nancy Drew Files series that I enjoyed not the Nancy Drew mystery stories. They were okay. I mean, they helped pass the time at work, which is really what I wanted them for. I didn't honestly truly enjoy them. They just helped pass the time. Those were the books that I read in January and February. I feel pretty good about seeing the big stack of books. It just makes me feel good when I read a lot. Unfortunately, March seems to be another kind of blech month. That's just what happens when you're a mood reader like me. Thank you so much for putting up with me and my rambly mess. I haven't filmed in forever so I feel a little rusty and I think this was a big mess. I'll do better next time, okay? If you've read any of these books, definitely let me know your thoughts. Do yours differ from mine? Do you see something that I didn't let me know? That's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Elle and I'll see you guys next time.